calm day beneath the sea. There are living things around that you might perhaps imagine to be quite harmless. Yet things are not as they seem, because these creatures are some of the most dangerous in the oceans. They are the members of the order containing jellyfish, hydroids, and corals. Otherwise known as the Nadiria. The reason for that name is the poison cells known as nidoblasts in various parts of their bodies. There is a caustic substance contained within the capsule-like cells. The cell bursts at the slightest stimulation, being touched by a living thing, for instance, and the poison then passes into it. This fluid is so powerful that in most cases, the victim dies in paralysis. Some species have thousands of these poison cells. This hairy anemone, which generally lives in the waters around Norway, is another member of the same family. The exceedingly complex structure behind its ordinary looking appearance amazes scientists. The animal has muscles that enable it to move, nerve cells and a stomach. It can move in a wide range of directions. There are thousands of cells in its throat that permit it to digest water. Through these cells, water covers its body and forms a liquid skeleton, keeping the creatures upright. The anemone waits, ready to defend itself. One needs a profound knowledge of chemistry and biology to fully understand the details of the system in its body. Even the poison it produces can only be fully understood in the laboratory. And what is more, training lasting many years is needed in order to be able to do this. Yet these living things are able to protect themselves using this system whenever they feel the need to do so, from the moment they come into being. It is Allah, Lord of the earth and sky, who creates all things, living and inanimate, together with these characteristics that permit them to defend themselves, and it is Allah who maintains them under his control at all times. There is no creature he does not hold by the forelock. Jellyfish are fascinating creatures known to everyone. Their bodies are 95% water. And they also have a number of astonishing features most people are unfamiliar with. Some species distract predators by emitting light, for example, while others manufacture deadly poisons inside their bodies. They are capable of surviving under just about climatic conditions and represent a danger to a great variety of living things. Their bodies are transparent, with tendrils stretching down from the lower regions. Some species have poison in these tendrils. They catch their prey by squirting this poison out, and use the same method to kill predators. Yet even jellyfish species which lack poison are by no means defenseless. Some emit light in order to protect themselves. Jellyfish behave in a very planned and methodical way to escape predators. As they flee, their attackers, 
a light goes on in their entire bodies. Yet just as the predator is about to seize them, they turn off the light in the dome-shaped part of their bodies, and they separate the tendrils in which the light remains on from their body. The predator's attention is thus drawn towards the tentacles. The jellyfish then takes advantage of this to escape. How does a life form that quickly dries up and dies in contact with the sun, and that consists almost entirely of water, create chemical substances? How is it able to develop techniques that will deceive predators? Jellyfish are merely a thin sack containing water, yet they engage in such intelligent behavior as using a range of tactics to hunt and escape predators. It is clear that this intelligence and the mind that has solved these difficulties cannot belong to the jellyfish themselves. It is Almighty Allah who creates all living things and inspires all their behavior. Everyone in the heavens and the earth belongs to him. All are submissive to him. These are anemone plants, and they also have poisonous arms. Yet some creatures are unaffected by that poison, such as anemone fish, better known as clownfish. Not only are these fish unaffected by the poison, they also spend their lives among the burning capsules of this dangerous plant. But how is this possible? The fish's body is covered in a special chemical substance. This prevents the poison from affecting the fish's body. A single anemone is enough to protect clownfish against all dangers throughout their lives. This symbiotic relationship gives the fish protection against predators. In return, the anemone plant makes use of food particles left behind by the fish. It is clear that this is one single creator, aware of both who brings these two life forms together. They have been created by Allah in such a manner as to complement each other and meet one another's needs. The images you are now looking at have been taken from one of the most popular animated films of recent years, Finding Nemo. The hero of the film, consisting entirely of three-dimensional animations, is a clownfish of the kind we have just been looking at. The film attracted wide attention from the moment it was first shown. Praise was heaped on the director and animation team. The film broke all records with annual receipts of 339,700. But how did this film actually come into being? Thousands of peoples worked on it. Assistance was sought from experts on underwater life. Thousands of people spent months working in order to bestow a lifelike appearance on a single clownfish for just one and a half hours, which we have described very briefly here, or on other marine life forms. Everybody knows that the people making the film 
are entirely responsible for all the features of the life forms in it. Their shapes, colors, swimming, and other abilities. And the way their eyes move. Nobody seeing the film says that these things came about of their own accord, or that the fish swims by chance. No rational person could ever make such a claim. That being the case, it is obvious that it is impossible for even a few fish, let alone all undersea life, all the creatures living there, and all the systems contained within them, to have emerged by chance. And not just for one and a half hours, but at every moment over the course of millions of years. There can be absolutely no doubt whatsoever that the flawless variety under the sea and in the universe as a whole is the result of a specific creation. It is Allah, the all-powerful and omniscient, Lord of all who creates a single clownfish, all other fish besides plants and animals. Our Almighty Lord, who has power over all things, directs all living things and inspires their behavior. Everything in the heavens and everything on earth glorifies Allah. Sovereignty and praise belong to Him. He has power over all things.